Yeah. And matter of fact, Christine Fisher, our guest here today on uh, the Bass Pro Shops stage here, um, Miss Christine Fisher, um, you have a lot of things to talk about here today, right? And and again, you're a repeat offender. You've been on the Bilge podcast before. I have. Um, you've crushed it on the kayak tours, the numerous kayak tours. Um, but is it time to uh, maybe step up a little bit and, and take the next step in your fishing career? I, I think it is, you guys. You know, I've been on the fence. I've had a lot of people that have followed my journey and have asked, are you ever going to get a boat? Are you jumping into a boat? Are you going to start fishing some opens and, you know, seeing what you got against these guys? And, you know, the timing was just never right. But I think the time is right now. And I am really excited to to talk about that with y'all. Before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the expo here. I've been, I know you've been just as busy trade over there. This show is like absolutely amazing. It's only been open for an hour and 34 minutes and the crowd is absolutely ginormous out here. I mean, right. I mean, do kayak tournaments get these kind of draws? <laughs> you know, nothing quite like this. It's a little different. Um, but the cool thing about this is I see a lot of people out there. I see kayak anglers. I see people that fish in the boat, fish on the bank. This Bassmaster Classic, at least to me, is like the heart of bass fishing. Yeah. All the fans, all the people, we're all cut from the same cloth, no matter what you fish out of. It's it's a really cool expo. Wow. Trey, what you got? I think it's time. I uh I've known you for a while now, and I know you're fishing out of a kayak and you love it, but uh, I heard that uh, Ranger is uh, dropping a new boat uh, model and that you will be representing that model and running it. What is that model? That is the Ranger 208. It's uh, an aluminum boat. But it's uh, it'll take a 250. I believe I can do a, two, a 200, a 225, and a 250. And I got to actually get in the boat literally for the first time a week ago. And I was blown away. Are you, uh, did you say I want a tin boat or a fiberglass boat? Do you, it, was there one you wanted particularly or? You know, just thinking about it for me, I felt like the natural progression from fishing in a kayak for the last eight years um, to going into jumping into boat tournaments. I thought that the, you know, the tin boat would be a really organic thing for me to get into. And yeah. I think I can beat that up a little bit more than I could a fiberglass, Maybe. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so uh, I thought that'd be a really good route for me. A good stepping stone for yeah. you. So we've had you on the show, uh, you know, a time before this, and I've talked with you off camera a lot of times. Like for all the people here and, and uh, you know, any aspiring professional bass fishermen, I mean, I've met a ton of bank anglers, a ton of kayak anglers, professionals uh, over the last couple of days here. Like explain the importance of taking each step one at a time. Well, it's just important, you know, for your journey, like you want to make sure that you're going to do this for the long haul. You're not getting in over your head. You're not jumping off the deep end per se. And I just think the natural progression of learning, you know, a lot of us learn how to fish, fishing on the bank, fishing with certain things. And, you know, then the kayak is a really good step. It's economically friendly. And then you've got a whole nother world with the boat thing. And it's it can be really, really intimidating. But when you're building that foundation along the way, I think it sets you up better for success. Yeah. I still feel like I'm about ready to jump off the deep end a little bit, but like nervous. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, what are you nervous about? Honestly, what I'm most nervous about is uh, <laughs> being in a, like a situation I was down in Okeechobee in a lock with 40 boats right next to me. I just don't want to. I don't want to scratch anybody's boat. You're worried know? about everyone else's boat. Yeah, I'm not worried about mine. <laughs> like, uh, I don't. I don't tell. I guess don't tell Ranger that. But <laughs> no, I'm more worried about just everything else. But I think I think it'll be fine. Um, I think it's very important to have more women in boats. For, for sure. You see all these girls walking around. I've met a few of them, and for them to see. A woman with a boat is huge. And I think naturally our industry, you should be one of those women. You know, you've led the way and uh, I'm excited for you. Well, I I mean, I'm part of it. But watching women like you, like Christy Bradley, you know, women that I've watched fish the opens year after year was literally the most inspiring thing for me at the beginning of my career. Right. So and there were women before that that kind of helped, you know, lead this charge and you know, no matter how it goes, just seeing more women out there represented and not quitting when yeah. they get their teeth kicked in, sure. I think is really important. There's a lot of young women that don't, you know, that just want to see it happen. So what's the plan? Are you going to actually fish tournaments on the boater side this year? I am. Yeah. So I'm actually going to fish my first. I'll probably fish. A, I'll probably jump in a couple working mans, but I'm going to fish the Hartwell Open 
in October. Oh, very, so, so you've got um, you've got a that? couple months to yeah around then to get ready. That'll be fun. No, yeah. you'll do good. Um, yeah, working man's especially around Fort Worth. You yeah, think the competition's you'll... hard. Yeah, that's, that's a good place to start. Lake Worth Wednesday nighters. Yeah, that'll be fun. I I, I love it. I'm that's excited. perfect for your ten vote too. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. Got any questions, Chris? No, yeah, you talked about like being in a lock or whatever. And, you know, you obviously you don't have to deal with that in the kayak world or like the float tube world or bank fish or anything like that. But I think the Ranger 208 could absolutely take that. No, I mean, no doubt. But um, how about rigging? Well, let's talk about like some of the rigging. I mean, did you order it straight from the factory? What I mean, what kind of electronics and things are on it? Trolling motor, all that stuff. So I'm going to be running um, a Garmin. Uh, I believe I've got the the 10-inch, the 106 SB up front, or might be the, the 126, um, along with a Humminbird for a Mega360. And I haven't, I ran Humminbird a few years ago, so, but I think that'd be really nice to run that kind of in conjunction with forward-facing sonar. And then on the dash, I've, I've got a um, Lowrance, and I have, I believe, a... Um, Garmin on that as well. So I'll have two graphs up front. I, I wanted to keep this pretty simple. Yeah. You know, not get too pretty crazy. simple. You yeah. Got four graphs. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but I saw y'all's video on the Elite Series graphs and there were guys with seven to 10 graphs on the boat. I was like, wow, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty intense. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, like the kayak tours. I, is there a tournament? Isn't there a tournament going on right now? There's a kayak tournament. It ended going yesterday. On. Oh, it did yep. end yesterday. On Tech Killer. Okay. Yeah. And those guys are just as good, if not better, than some of you know the elite touring guys out there. I mean, they know their way around, you know, vessels, fishing vessels. And a lot of these kayakers now they have the live scopes, they have the forward facing sonars, the three sixties, and things like that. Yeah. And I mean, do you see yourself, you know, challenged by that jump from the kayak to the boat? Like, what are some of the concerns? Uh, whether it's the foot trolling motor yeah, pedal. What are, are you are you what are what are some of the concerns when it comes like to the physicality of going from a kayak to a bass boat you know i think the biggest thing right off the bat is the trolling motor you know i've been on a boat a few times and i do feel just a little bit off balance because boat positioning as you well know is is crucial when you're competitively fishing and right. i think just getting to where that boat is like a part of you and you know exactly how it's going to handle getting the right positioning and maneuvering that trolling motor is extremely important that's definitely you know just the simple stuff like driving the boat i'll pick that up pretty fast yeah. you know backing yeah. a trailer i can back a trailer in a space that big i have no problem with that it's the trolling motor mostly and then on top of that it's uh you know casting angles are a little bit different i yep. think it'll just take but that'll probably come pretty quick a few times out in the water just being a little bit higher up as opposed to being right on the water with a kayak your casting angles are going to be a little bit different i've noticed that right off the bat like you're known as like every time you make a social media post you're like the skipper right you love skipping that slow yeah. bait up underneath the dock or underneath that lay down or yes. whatever. So you're talking about that angle changes. So. And I wonder, is it easier from a boat to skip or is it easier on a kayak? You're closer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you it's harder. It's harder because yeah. you're a little higher, you're, That's right? what I figured. Yeah. So yeah. I did the kick boat thing. I mean, the eight foot kick boat thing when you're, you know, your rod tip stays like, I don't know what. Pretty close two to the feet, water. Yeah, two feet off the water. So it's just a nice straight cast under there. But then you elevate it five feet, you know, however tall you are. And then that angle kind of changes. And it's just like you said, angles are everything. When you're trying to catch these things back here, um, you know, presentation is everything. Mm -hmm. So it's a little harder. I'm sure you'll pick it up. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a little bit. And then just watching the, you know, the opens right now are inundated with some incredible talent, especially with the forward facing sonar and guys that, you know, all they do is fish. There's no not a lot of responsibilities, no family. They're they are focused on bass fishing. So I know that that's going to be another big challenge for me just to really pour back into the competitive side what are you going to do with your old kayak i want to know that well, I'm, still, I mean, I'm still going to fish out of the car. oh you're not going to you're not going to leave your friends behind no uh -uh. Oh. that community is important to me yeah no it's huge no i'll still do that chris, chris left his kick boat community behind yeah, i hear they're pretty disgruntled about that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i get invites all the time to go back to california and compete in the kick boat thing but i mean it's like you watch some of the NASCAR guys when they go from the cup cars down to like the dirt track or whatever, and everyone like hates on them or whatever. I don't want to be that dude. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, those guys are just as good, if not better, to compete on tour. I mean, they just don't have the resources or right. anything like that. So, right. um, it's a whole commitment. So, yeah. are you, uh, you're partnered with Ranger? Are you partnered with Bass Pro too? Yes, I am. Very, Very excited cool. to announce that too. Yeah. They've been a staple in bass fishing for as long as I can remember. So right. It's, it's an honor to be part of that family as well. And uh, then you guys, you're also a part of this new Bass Master movement too. Yes. And uh, what are, what's that entail? 
So, you know, a lot of the details aren't ironed out yet, but the the whole premise behind that program is to try to recognize women in the sport with the main focus of being encouraging more women to get into Correct. competitive fishing and just fishing Correct. in general. So there's going to be a lot of efforts, you know, to come down the road to highlighting women that are fishing tournaments, whether it be on the co-angler side or the, you know, on the open side and just women out there in general. Um, there's the Bassmaster hashtag and, and just trying to like foster that community of women that, you know, are trying to get into the sport. Very cool. Because there's a lot of them out there. I mean, yeah. I just there's walking through the here. floor right here. I mean, there are so many young women who are involved not only in the high school programs and college programs, but even at the professional level. I mean, they are they are everywhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, women are half our population, depending on what state you go to. You travel further out west from California, then the, you know, it gets kind of muddied up there. But no, I mean, uh, you know, talking about women in the sport of fishing, it's it's literally half our population. So yep. why not tap into that? And these days, it is cool to be a woman or a female angler. I mean, absolutely, yep. right? With social media, uh, again, with the high school and college programs. Um, and again, you know, we say it all the time. There's Josh Jones. I, dude, out of the corner of my eye, Josh Jones, I saw the blonde hair, and we were talking about women's fishing. And there's, like, a, there's one right there. Yeah, yeah, She's good. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Jones in the house. That guy's caught more 10 pounds hey, than anyone. Weren't you going? Have you been out with Josh yet? Uh, I still got to make that happen. Yeah. yeah, he's 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 been kind of busy lately. <laughs> yeah, catch, catching fifty pound sacks out there. I six. think they caught like a sixty nine or something. Like they're catching like thirteens and fifteens right now. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's the guy I need to talk to if I want to scale up my competition and get that forward facing sonar really dialed in. So Josh, I, I got appointments with him. <laughs> Josh Jones, Josh, uh, just a couple days ago, would you catch a thirteen and a fourteen pounder or a fifteen? 14 pounder that's that's the man right there josh jones he's yeah he's the guy i heard yeah. he started out in a kayak too yep no no he, <laughs> no, he, did not. he, he told he, me he's like yeah i'll help you with four bases sonar but i'm not stepping foot in that kayak and i was like that's didn't great. he start with a bass tracker <laughs> yeah uh, it was, yeah. was some little yeah i think he had a tracker he did so like that. i'd imagine like going from a kayak to a uh uh you know a 208 ranger aluminum boat um, so like one thing I've seen in your videos, you post them, you got the GoPro running, like when you catch a fish and the wind is slightly blowing, it seems like you get blown off the spot, like quickly and rapidly. So like that part of your mind, if you, you know, translate it to the bass boat side, things will just slow down and chill a little bit more because yeah. you don't get blown around, um, you know, your areas as much. I mean, yeah. that that's a huge positive. Sure. It is. I, I think there's going to be a lot of things. Just having the, that type of boat control, having spot lock, being able to set a course and run a bank line, like that's going to just completely like blow my mind, I think. And you won't have to load up and move ramp. Oh, that's that's huge, yeah. too. Yeah. Just getting in, you know, getting in that boat and seeing it for the first time a week ago, looking at the storage, I was like, oh, my gosh, I can literally have everything. How many everything. rods do you normally carry on a kayak? So I usually carry this last tournament. I probably had 15. That's that's in a that's, kayak. Yeah, I'll have 12 to 16 and usually all times. What? But Where I mean, you could go? have like 30 on the Where boat. Where do they go? On a rack? We've got the horizontal storage and I have a crate in the back that holds uh, eight and I can carry 12 inside in that huh. storage. Wow. Yeah, it's, so, it's a little excessive. So now sometimes. you can double that in the yeah. boat. And, and then the t just the tackle, you know, like to like yesterday, I wish I would have had jig and spins. You know, I didn't think I would need them. I didn't think that the conditions were calling for it, but I didn't bring them out on the water. And I really wish I would have had some. Yeah. You know, do you know how many gallons uh, the fuel tank holds in your new boat? I don't. There's a I went through the gauges just briefly with yeah. games. Um, the, the nice thing about it is it tells you like your fuel usage. Yeah. And he said it, you're able, you basically, you watch that. I see he said more than the actual like fuel gauge is what you've, like are you, you're, are you nervous about like running out of gas or anything? Absolutely. I'm running out of gas in my truck. So yes, I'm <laughs> nervous about running it out of my boat. I'm a, like, I'm a chick. We do that. We never put gas in things. So yeah, that's definitely a concern. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, no. Oh, it's funny. Every year I pick up my nitro and like after like second week, I've got my rims on my trailer just all scratched up. And normally you could insert a female joke right there, but it's, uh, it's me. I'm it's the one me that scratches hurt. all my wheels and I have to call Dustin at Bass Pro to order more wheels and everything, but I'm sure you'll handle that. Do, all do, that do stuff. people run out of gas sometimes? Oh, absolutely. I did, I, absolutely. I, that guy we just talked about. What do you do in that situation? Um, oh, it was the worst. Um, well, I had like a fuel, like the float stick, and we thought, I turned the gauge and I thought I had so much gas in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I knew what I'm running, like no big deal. 
Well, I got on the water, immediately ran out of gas, and that float was stuck. So it told me I had half a tank, and I didn't. That was in a prior yeah. boat. Yeah, that was yeah, a few yeah. years ago in a prior But um, you just fish on your trolling motor at that point. Yeah. Uh, and you try and get us, you fish your way back, and then hopefully someone picks you up along the tournament day. So you're making a huge upgrade, obviously, from the kayak to a Ranger 208. And by the way, I used to own a Ranger 208 VX uh, back in 2010, I believe. It was a fiberglass boat, the 208 model. And if the aluminum model is anything like that 208 VX I had back in 2010, I mean, that is a phenomenal platform, like super stable. And you said you just ran it last week. Yeah. Um, I mean, a couple takeaways, first initial thoughts of that, that 208 hole. Well, the first thing right off the bat I noticed when I got up front with James, it had the deck space up that you could comfortably fish three people. Like if it, it almost felt like it was wider than like a lot of the. And this is an aluminum boat. Yeah, I mean that's like unheard that, of. That's that's my first thing. I thought that I would be a little bit more cramped, kind of in that aluminum boat, but it wasn't. It, it was com- the deck. I was wide. It was very comfortable. It fished the two of us easily. Like I said, a third person could be up there. Um, I love the layout on the console and the, it drove the way it drove was just it was very smooth. You know, being a co in some of the opens, I've I've ridden a couple different boats now and some of them you're like, oh, boy, that's uh, it's kind of a rough ride. But this was I was very pleased with that. Is there one here on the floor this week? I believe so. Is there is there a ranger on the floor this week? The new boat she has. Oh, you can't hear. Uh Oh, never mind. I mean, I, I I believe I thought that L- Lat Lauren said there yep, was gonna- there's one right to the left, Lisa. right there. Okay. Oh, that's your boat right there. Yeah, it's pretty. So it's wow. got fiberglass consoles, and yeah, that's a nice boat. Yeah, you're gonna do the whole wrap and everything. You wrapping it all or not quite? I, I bet that's the plan. Yeah, yeah. I I you know I, I'm not I'm not a usually a wrap boat person, yeah. but I think that's yeah. probably gonna probably gonna have to happen. It's got big live wells too, I'm sure. So that's one big thing. So it's go- a fully yeah. rigged tournament boat. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yep. And that's why that's why I'm really excited to run that at the Hartwell Open. I think, you know, there I I'm going to be very comfortable. It's an easy lake to run. And I think that boat will will do great. I mean, James has been fishing out of that now for. So, so if you want to see Christine's new boats to our left, it's a brand new model. Uh, brand new tin boat. Um, could run a 250 at a price point lower than a regular fiberglass boat. And, yeah, which that's is the nice. And they are selling them here this week. So, yep. Yeah, go check that thing out. Um, so I did that celebrity pro am yesterday. We ended up winning that tournament. I, I saw that. Was fishing. Cool like was that? he was awesome. Like I, I didn't know what to expect. The dude's a saltwater guy or whatever. Um, but like the Tourney X app that we use is the exact same app. Yes. The what did you think use, of that? Right? Uh, there's a lot more steps to it than I would, you know, cause I'm a, all right, let's cast, let's catch the next one, put it in the live well, then go to the way, you know, mm-hmm. that type of thing. But like all those added steps of, of what you guys do in the kayak world, uh, a little bit of advice when you go to the big boat, you know, don't take pictures and measure it and throw it back. Make sure they go in the <laughs> live well, because that would be something else. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. You know, the catch weight release format is, there's a lot of benefits to it um and everything but um but yeah but there's just something about an old school tournament like these guys are fishing here at the classic where you weigh your five biggest big ones yeah. and you're probably like me where you just enjoy seeing fish like, like cool. this morning when we were setting up this booth like i got distracted i was just looking at these fish and i'm the type of guy who like midday mid tournament will open up the live well on my z21 xl and just like stare at fish and just like touch them and poke them like a little kid so um but yeah yeah don't release any of those fish. i'm gonna try really hard not to do that. yeah so i, you, I gotta catch them first yeah. so yeah <laughs> have you ever live bolt fish ever uh just co-angler stuff yeah oh opens. yeah yeah yep the opens for co-angler stuff cool. but that's it and it is cool bringing them on stage like that yeah. you know it does give you like that different rush so yeah it's a neat experience well so you're going to fish the Hartwell Open later mm-hmm. this year. So yep. kind of get your feet wet with the the pro am style fishing as a pro. Yeah, I, I hear that time of year the, the Hartwell being a blueback herring lake, uh, it's, it's a scoping lake. Oh for yeah, sure. yeah, so that's oh, good. Yeah. That <laughs> with stuff. my uh, flipping hat. There's yeah, there's that whole thing. <laughs> and um, so you'll get your feet wet there. And then are there any other opens throughout the, the you know after that tournament, or is it just this one? 
uh, next year I plan on at least fishing a division for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to look and see what the schedule allows. I'm going to see how Hartwell goes. And yeah, um, yeah I'm, I will definitely fish several next year as and well. And then we've got another female angler here in the booth, Anastasia. Is that, yeah, yeah, yeah Anastasia's she's here, fishing. And she's fishing all the Bassmaster Opens as well, I believe, right? She's fishing the Southern Division this year. I think next year she'll do all nine, Okay, which is, which is awesome. Is that what you plan on doing? You fish all That's That's the goal. Wow. Yeah, that's the goal. And that's how we qualify for the Elite Series and or the Classic. At the first first goal is just to get through the get through the year. <laughs> not hit anything. Yeah. Yeah. Not not hit anything. Not hurt. Not scratch anybody's boat. Not you know run up run up on a sandbar or something. Trying nice. to get trying to get in skinny water. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. Again, you know, going back to the kayak thing, you've talked about it before. A lot of advantages and a lot of areas that are accessible only by kayak, but. It seems like these days, like in these kayak tournaments, like there's not a lot of guys or gals that go back to those backwaters in these kayaks. They're like right in the middle of the yep. lake scoping yep. and, you know, uh, implementing all these like offshore tactics in this tiny little 12 foot or 14 foot kayak hanging with the big boys. So, I mean, you'll be right at home. Yeah, I- I'm excited. I think it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good. Well, Christine, thank you uh, for coming on. I know it was a quick hitter. Whoa. Really? Yeah. That fast? You were paying attention Dude. to the people who were quacking on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's time. time. All right. So That's get, good though, guys. Tell Thank them, you. Yeah. Tell them one more time. Once again, the boat you'll be running and how they can follow you on social media. So I'm f- doing the Ranger 208. Yep. And you can follow me on social media on uh, Instagram, Midwest Fisher Gal, Facebook, and YouTube. I think it's just Christine Fisher. Very good. All right. Before we go off, a uh, bit of advice to some of the fans here. Uh, everyone's watching the expo on the big screen here. Um, you know, you haven't made the classic yet. I bet it'll come in the next two or three years, but a little bit of advice going from step to step to step, uh, maybe a little mindset advice. How do you take the first step and how do you continue on, um, you know, to reach, you know, your goals of qualifying or whatever it might be. So I think the biggest thing is, you know, and it's with bass fishing, especially a lot of people, you were probably told your whole life, you're, it's not feasible. You can't become a oh, professional yeah. angler. That's not, uh, that's such a small percentage of people. Just like I'm told, you know, we're not, we're not ever going to see a female qualify for the elite series or it's way, way, way off. And that kind of stuff, you no, know, regardless of, you know, how out of reach it may be, if you're, you can't have any of that in your head whatsoever. Yes. If you've got a dream and you've got a goal, the most important thing you can do is focus on that, tune into your own voice and hammer down and put 150% into what you want to do. And I, I'm a big believer that anybody out there, no matter what they want to do, no matter how freaking crazy it is, they're capable of it. And the, I mean, the biggest changes out there and the, the, what really like changes the world is when people said it can't be done. Right. So that's what inspires everybody. Yeah. And to add to that, I mean, anyone listening, um, you know, if you want to be a professional angler, again, take it one step at a time and just work your tail off. It's just work. like with anything in life, mm-hmm. any type of business, any anything in life, mowing the lawn. Make sure you're mowing the best dang lawn you absolutely yes. could, and you will absolutely go places. Do so. the work on the front end. Take it step by step. Make sure you've got everything covered, and that way it'll set yourself up for a good foundation yep. and a good future. Be a standout. So That's right. Excellent. Well, That's Christine, right. thank you for having us. Miss Christine Fisher, thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank and you, guys. That was a nice little quick hitter there. Build podcast in the Bass Pro booth. Thank you all. Thank you, guys.